Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geeky Limited Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial we're going to be working with functions within the Swift language. Now as you can see in our previous lectures on Swift we had the ability to use variables and basic arrays within Swift and we learned how simple they were to kind of create and use compared to the old Objective-C language. So we can work with functions today and they're just as easy as variables and arrays to basically create. And how you would understand these functions is basically we create a function and just tell it what to do. So it's not like say we wanted to display text within a label in Objective C, you need to create your action button and get our label, then you know, sing it out to the text function, then equal a string of piece of text, and you know, all that stuff. We can, you know, as easy as that quite kind of kind of seemed, it's gonna seem even more more difficult once we kind of um, take our steps into Swift. So what we're going to do is have a simple function to print or display a piece of text. So what we're going to do here is create our function button here and we simply name this hello with our parentheses there. And enter parentheses there so it spades it out. So it very much looks like how you create an action button. And all we're going to do is simply get print uh, out in there and in between it we're going to have the text we want it to display. So as you can see there, we printed it, our text there. And then to make this action happen, or this function happen, we simply get the name of our function, which is hello. And there you go. As simple as that. So we've created our function, then we kind of triggered the action for it to display. So the word we wanted to print was hello, which you can see here in our live preview there. And once we publish it here in our console output, again, hello. As simple as that. We can go on to you know kind of uh, making it a little bit more forward and creating it with a string. So what we do this time is do our function button again, and then I'll simply do hello name. So what we can do now is say hello to a name of our string that we have created. So what we do with our parentheses here, we simply put in name, which would be the name of our string here. We do code on there, and I simply write out string. Create our parentheses there, and enter. So again, we repeat the same kind of process, and time, this time we do print, and in between it we do our two brackets, and then we do hello, and then we do forward slash, parentheses, and then our name of our string there. So again, nothing happens until we create our kind of action function. And this time we do hello name, there we go, and it has a string on the end of it this time. Now, what's going to happen, it's going to print the word hello like it did before, but then it's going to add our string of our name. Now, this could be anything that we set within our variables or any of our arrays, which we've learned about in the past. So we can really add almost anything in here to do with our string. Now, the name I wanted to say hello to is simply going to be my name. So if I put in my name, and then there we go, it prints it out. So it's going to print out our string and link it up to there. So it's going to get our action or our function and it's going to print hello and it's going to equal our name string and our string is linked on to our kind of trigger here which hello name is Aaron so it prints out hello Aaron and you can see up in our console output there again hello Aaron again we can take this even one step further and then present multiple names or multiple strings within it so if we create another function and then we call this one names with our parentheses there and it's going to link to basically uh, again parentheses and you can put in our string comma string as we're going to have in two in there and a bracket there and then our parentheses again and it's simply going to print or return this time the names which is our two parentheses there two quotation marks and then our first name which would be Aaron and we can do a comma after our quotation mark there and again two quotation marks and this time I put in a random name let's say Steve uh, and then after that there if I go down and again trigger it to happen again it then prints out it doesn't pull it in there as we haven't set it to print to our console there we're just simply returning it it gets our names there our index 0 is Aaron our index 1 is Steve so again we can get multiple strings and print them ready that's kind of creating our function to do it and we can now take this again another step further. All these steps are, you know, mind blowing. We're going to kind of do some basic calculations. 
So we're going to create a kind of calculator in terms, not of like what you would get on your phone, like one plus one equals two or stuff like that. A just nice simple calculation that will print it within our console output, very much like how our um, functions are printing hello and hello Aaron. So we call it function there, and I simply call it calculator. And then we do our um, two parentheses there, and the parentheses that enter it all open there. And then we're going to do simply get the height and the width, and then kind of times it by itself to then get the area size. So that's what we're going to do, like kind of like a calculation of the square feet of a room, so to speak, but not quite that. So what we're going to do is get our let let there, and we're going to call this one height as this will be our height one, and our height is going to equal, let's say 50, it could be 50 meters, 50 centimeters, if it was centimeters it would be a pretty small room, but 50 centimeters, that's uh, meters let's say, so call it 50 meters, repeat this to width, as this will be our width one, and this will equal let's say 100, so the width is double the height of the room, and then we need to get the area of it, so we put our leg again, create like, it all out, and we call this one area, and what this is going to equal is basically the calculation of our height and width. So what we would do is put our height, asterisk, which is the kind of time symbol, our width, and then we're going to get it to print, basically print in our two um, parentheses here, uh, two quotation marks, we can simply have area is, and then the area is simply going to be, forward slash um, parentheses there, the area is simply going to be the calculation of the area which is going to equal height times width. So if we finish all that up there, and then we need to create kind of like our trigger again. So we call it calculate, I want to press it, it will calculate and trigger it there, so it gets our height which is 50, it gets our width which is 100, it ties them together which kind of equals 5000, and then places that within our string, so it simply says the area is 5,000. And as you can see at the top there, it's kind of printed it within our console output. So that's how you can kind of create a function within, or kind of around a calculation, and simply how simple it is to add these calculations and combine all this stuff together. So we've basically learned there how to create small functions and how to trigger them and set them off, uh, basically how you would, you know, when you interact with them. Uh, like you would when you're building your own applications like pressing a button. So that's simply how you create and use functions within the Swift language. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, and if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media, all the links will be in the description below. If you want more on-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course, the links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.